Good morning, everyone. My name is Malum Divina Stella. I'm the coordinator of Children for Peace and the laureate of the International Children Peace Prize 2019. I first would like to thank the Almighty God who gave me the opportunity to be invited as an expert in the International Conference of May 1840 Anniversary Seoul Commission 2020. I am going to present on the team working to mobilize children for democracy, human rights, and peace in the security crisis context in Cameroon. Introduction. Here are some images of the security crisis in several countries across Africa. The sociopolitical context in Africa is characterized by an escalation of violence and insecurity perpetrated by terrorist groups like Boko Haram, Al Shabaab, and the various affiliations of Al Qaeda, which are relatively well known both regionally and globally. The rise of this group with similar ideological leanings and violent manifestations is alarming. To mention a few, we have the Movement for Unity and Jihad West Africa, which is operating across the Sahelian states, and Sardin functioning predominantly from Mali, Hips Islam from Somalia. These terrorist groups have been imposing a heavy toll on several African countries over the past decades, including Cameroon. The geographical position of uh, the country at the crossroad of the geographical area of the Central Africa and West Africa and the porosity of its borders predisposes Cameroon to suffer the contingencies linked to the cross-border transmission of insecurity from the countries of the two sub-regions. The opening of the country on the sea and the porosity of its borders make it a heap of maritime piracy, banditry that is attacked on banks and uh, oil installation, and multi-form smuggling that is drug trafficking, human being trafficking, small arms, and illegal immigration. Since a couple of years, Cameroon is experiencing unprecedented security crisis. The country is in the grip of multiple conflicts. During the first attack in 2012 at the east of the country by the Seleka and the anti-Balaka group from the Central African Rebellion, there was an increase in the number of refugees, including those from the Central African crisis. The north part of Cameroon knew its first attack in 2014. In 2016 began the Anglophone crisis, specifically in northwest and southwest region of Cameroon. Many stakeholders have been implementing action to present the security crisis in Cameroon since 2014, among them Children for Peace. In this presentation, we are going to analyze the security crisis the country undergoes since 2014 before focusing on the contribution to children um, being for democracy, human rights, and peace in the security crisis context in Cameroon. Understanding the security crisis in Cameroon. Main causes of the security crisis in Cameroon. Main causes of Boko Haram in Cameroon. The geographical position of Cameroon, the cultural link with Nigeria, and the porosity of the country's borders. The activities of Boko Haram in Cameroon seems to have been supported by historical, geographical, and social factors. The proximity of the far north Cameroon and the state of Bono from Nigeria, which is the epicenter of Boko Haram insurgency. The multicultural ties of the border tribes, both in Cameroon and Nigeria, political, ideological, and religious willing of uh, terrorist groups to challenge the nation state and the lecture basin both religiously, territorially, and therefore politically. It's to economic marginalization, low literacy rate, and vulnerability of the far north region of Cameroon. Just before the first attack of Boko Haram, the school enrollment rate in the region of the far north where girls are often denied education and forced into early marriages was 33%. The region is characterized by a weak presence of the administration 
socioeconomic marginalization and poverty of the population, as well as the, the effect of ecological and climate change. Very poor road network and basic commodities like water are almost non-existent in most cities. Limited, there is a limited access to electricity and the health centers. Main causes of Anglophone crisis. The feeling of the Anglophones to be marginalized by the Cameroonian political system. If on many aspects Anglophones do not differ substantially from their French-speaking counterpart, there are some areas where the English-speaking question takes shape. Their massive defiance towards the power and public institution, several Anglophones believe that the Anglophones who are appointed are always confined to assistant position. The holding of power for decades by a majority speaking French at the expense of the minority speaking English. The dissatisfaction of many with democratic functioning, there is a deep feeling of distrust. For many, bilingualism only exists on papers. Lazity of leaders to ensure the fusion of the double anglophone and francophone cultural heritage in the effective functioning of the state apparatus in all institutions. Impact of the security crisis in Cameroon. Here are some pictures showing several victims of conflict by the activities of terrorist groups in villages and towns among rich children. Impact on the human rights rape heavy material and human damages. Boko Haram has so far made at least 2,500 kills, 250,000 displays. The war with the separatists has so far made over 3,000 killings, that is civilians and army, and forced more than 700,000 people out of their home. Thousands flee across the borders into Nigeria beside women and youth, children are the main victim of this conflict. The destruction of villages, homes, schools, public and private building or institutions and social services. Socioeconomic impact, increased poverty and socioeconomic vulnerability in the far north Cameroon, north and southwest with consequences on public health, including Limited access to healthcare, food, water, and sanitation, severe acute malnutrition. The Anglophone crisis has devastating effects on the economy of English regions and the whole country. According to Cameroonian Interpatronal Group, in July 2018, the Anglophone crisis has already resulted in the loss of 269 billion CFA, that is approximately 410 million euro, destroyed 6,434 formal jobs and threatened 8,000 other jobs. Impact on the democratic processes, intensification of illicit proliferation of small arms and light weapons across the country with heavy impact on the democracy. Low rate of citizen participation in municipal, senatorial, and, present, and, present, and presidential elections in the affected areas by conflict because of the fear of attack by separatists and Boko Haram members. This is the destruction made by terrorists in voting offices. Impact on children. In Cameroon, attacks by Boko Haram and separatist group and uh, security forces result in thousand children killed and maimed. Drastic decrease of school enrollment rate, increase of early marriages. Many families are pushing their children into commercial activities to survive. Here are two images. The first image. It's a woman showcasing crying for the loss of her daughter due to Boko Haram attack. The second is an internal displaced women crying for their future and their children victim of the Anglophone crisis conflict.
The first image here, girls are abducted by terrorists to forcibly their wife and use them for horrendous purposes. Yeah, girls are abducted during the Anglophone crisis. Suicide attack that have become the second leading cause of children casualties, accounting for over 1,000 deaths and 2,100 injuries. Many children abducted, abused, brutalized, tortured, and falsely recruited to accomplish inhuman acts. Give up of several children by their parents to obtain security guarantees or economic gain. Girls are targeted for particular horrendous abuse, that is sexual slavery. Early marriages either by terrorists or by their parents to overcome their financial difficulties. Here is an image of a girl who is a suicide bomber recruited by terrorists in the far north of Cameroon. Responses of Cameroonian government and partners to the security crisis. Here is multinational joint tax forces. Emergency humanitarian assistance plans to assist victims of the crisis. To manage the crisis, in addition to security forces respond in the Anglophone region, the government of Cameroon has unveiled an emergency humanitarian assistance plan to assist victims of the crisis. This plan essentially seeks to provide the affected persons with emergency humanitarian assistance, ensure their socioeconomic reintegration of affected persons, promote social cohesion and living together, as well as rehabilitate damage infrastructure. Related to Boko Haram crisis, the state of Cameroon and its partners have put in place a development plan that seems to be more focused on meeting the short-term survival needs of communities. Many development and humanitarian actions have been implemented by the civil society, several international organizations, government, United Nations, Africa Union Commission, and regional economic communities, such as IGAD, Lake Chad Basin Commission, and Economic Western African State, to prevent and to target violent extremism and radicalization. Here's an image of the President of the Republic of Cameroon, and the Council of Ministers. The creation of the National Disarmament, Demobilization and Reintegration Committee by the Head of State. In order to pacify the affected areas by war, President Tobias signed the decree number 2018-719 of 30th November 2018, creating the National Disarmament, Demobilization and Reintegration Committee. The aim of the committee is to provide a framework for receiving and reintegrating ex-combatants of Boko Haram and the armed groups of the Northwest and Southwest regions willing to respond to the head of state peace offer. However, the law fails adequately address reintegration, which is which constitute the most important component of GDR. The movement Children for Peace, democratizing public sphere for more political and economic expression and engagement of uh, children and rights of children and girls to address the security crisis affecting democracy, human rights, and peace in Cameroon. Context and aim of the creation of Children for Peace. Here is a march bus leaded by members of Children for Peace and Human Rights during the campaign Children United for Peace. Children for Peace, an association led by children, especially girls, working across Cameroon in complex cultural systems for children's rights, gender equity, and peace building. The organization has been created in 2015 after a trip made in the north of Cameroon, where I witnessed the impact of Boko Haram's activities on children and particularly girls. When talking about 
peace building, democracy and human rights, children are left behind, whereas they are the most victims of conflict. We help children to understand peace building and human rights challenges, build their leadership to transform their community and to contribute decisively to the emergency of children class its positioning and its effective participation in public policies. Children for Peace Action in Peace Building, Democracy and Human Rights. Here are images where we are building the capacity of children workshop, followed by the drafting of a declaration against violent extremism and radicalization and a press conference we organized too. Here, yeah, working with some of our members of peace clubs on activities, planning, and community conflict resolution approaches. Mobilizing children to define and implement action plan and several local and nationwide activities. We mobilize in complex cultural and religious background and affected areas by war to define and implement action plan and several local and nationwide activities among others. Advocacy towards government and local authorities for the respect of UN Convention on Child's Rights, Convention Against Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, the UNSCR 1325 and 2550. Elaboration and implementation of children Declaration Against Violent Extremism and Radicalization, Awareness Raising Campaign for Children and Girls' Rights and Peace Building in Schools, Marketplaces, Awareness Raising Campaigns Against Early Marriages. Here are images of life skills, value and social, moral support to affect dead girls and uh, children in conflictual retinues and the host communities. Here are images of uh, a mass sensitization and capacity building of children in human rights, gender equity and conflict resolution. The creation, production, distribution of children peace cartoons, organization of children capacity building workshop, creation and or an opera, sorry, operationalization of children peace clubs in schools, mosques, and communities. Realization of documentaries on peace building and children's rights. Organization of several children and intercommunity peace camps in affected areas by war. Organization of several peace building campaigns such as I am standing up for peace campaign. United for Peace campaign and the Silence the Gun campaign. Here are images of children and intercommunity peace camp in affected areas by war with refugees and internal displaced people. Here, the capacity building of girls in leadership and peace building, democracy and human rights in some of our children peace clubs in communities. Networking with community and political leaders for peace building, we have organized several, we have been organizing several meetings in the city capital and in affected areas by conflict to sensitize them on the role they can play to improve children's situation and bring peace back. We have constituted a network with some religious leaders in several areas, engaging them to work with children, mobilizing them in communities-based activities, engaging them against identity-based difference, and to find gender-sensitive approaches to dealing both with conflictual and early marriages in their communities. Here, are, here is an image of an advocacy meeting with several traditional and religious leaders to increase the collaboration with children in peace building conflict resolution and anti girls rights violations. Here too is an image of advocacy with community leaders and local authorities to increase the participation of children in peace building and for more protection of 
girls' rights. Strengthening collaboration for the development of the disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration technology for ex shoulders the DDR Tech. Children for Peace has been working closely with the African Network of Young Leaders for Peace and Sustainable Development to develop an application called Disarmament, Demobilization and Reintegration Technology for ex soldier for ex child soldiers. The aim of uh, the application is to fight against enrollment of children in armed groups and contributing to the restoration of security by disarming ex children soldiers and providing them with viable socio-economic reintegration opportunity in, civi in civilian life. The application will contribute to reduce by 25% incident caused by weapons, increase community confidence, the restorement by 20% of abandoned communities, the relaunch of informal trade and production activities, reintegration of 1,000 children and youth, revive political activities, reduced by 25% of conflict in sensitive areas. The software is still under development. We encounter some technical and financial difficulties in the finalization. Here is a screenshot related to the DDR tech software under development. Here too is a screenshot related to the DDR tech software under development. Main challenges encountered and means of mitigation deployed. The first challenge we face is related to administrative authorization and uh, complications. As our movement is made up of minor girls, it was no easy for us to freely operate in all areas we wanted. To overcome this situation, we work with some organization as African Network for Young Peace of Young Leaders for Peace and Sustainable Development to overcome these barriers. The second challenge was at the level of tradition and religion. As working in complex matter touching people belief, religions and traditions mostly when in comes to speak about gender equity, our message is not always appreciated. In many cultures, men should bear traditional arms to protect themselves and family. Peace building is mostly considered as men prerogative, and girls and women are most of the time not allowed to engage actively in such activities. We usually involve local associations and our network of uh, religious leaders to overcome those traditions and the religious barrier. The third challenge is the support of some communities, leaders, and local governments. Many used to think that children are incapable to play a leadership in complex issues like peace building and leading to social transformation. They think children should stay and adults should act on their behalf. To overcome this challenge, we used to adapt our speech and attitude to fit to the conflictual and cultural milieus we have been working in. We usually meet these communities, leaders, and local government before the implementation and require their full accompaniment all through the project and beyond. The fourth challenge was is at the level of language barrier. We have created cartoons explaining the horrors of violent extremism and early marriages on girls through the stories of boys and girls who have been experiencing several sexual violence and early marriages. Through cartoons, design and distribution, we tell wars stories and vehicle our peace building message. This is an image of um, painting meaningful tools for education and advocacy for peace building and human rights promotion. Yeah, we were implementing children, including victims of war, 
in art for peace session to tell their stories and expectation through painting and drawing. Result and impact for result and impact so achieved by children for peace. Working session with orphan children by conflict followed by distribution of our cartoon magazine. Here is an image. Through our action and engagement, children and girls are increasingly occupying public space in many communities and are working jointly with local authorities to solve conflict. Today, Children for Peace has over 100 active members across Cameroon and working in affected areas by war. Over 3,000 cartoons have been produced and distributed basic of meaningful conversations during awareness advocacy and uh, capacity building activities in Quranic schools, market churches in the capital, and when meeting community leaders, visiting street children, street orphans by conflict, and unprivileged children from uh, rural areas in the north. Over 25,000 children thought on leadership democracy, peace building, human rights, and gender equality. Over 1,200 children have been engaged in peace building and gender inequality through um, local and nationwide activities and through our 50 children peace clubs led by girls in most cases and communities. Conclusion. Children are key stakeholders and partners capable to drive societal transformation. We must invest on them to foster democracy, human rights, and peace. The finalization of the DDR tech will be an important step toward our vision. We are open to all partnerships that may help to overcome our technical and financial difficulties and contributing to the effective implementation of the DDR tech. Here is an image of the implementation of our campaign, Silence the Guns. Thank you for your kind attention.